Good morning. This is Katrina Madewell, and I am back this week. I missed you guys last week. How was it? Did you have fun in here in the studio without me? Oh, we had like a world-renowned host. I've been doing radio longer than the combined age of Adam and I put together. Oh, is that was that the final conclusion that we came up with? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was uh, just phenomenal. He had actually, uh, we, I, I love the trivia game we played where we were just trying to get people to guess who he was, and we kept revealing hints. So it was named that host. I think they actually took a long time to figure out that it was Charlie. I was uh, surprised. We could have given a couple of more uh, better hints at the beginning. We were given the obscure hints, but like any good game show, you got to lead your audience to the to the conclusion. And I'm uh, very happy about well, that. Well, nonetheless, it was my idea. I thought it was fun. It was, like, it was a blast. You know, with Charlie being around for a while, I thought people would really um, enjoy trying to recognize the voice and he's, see if they knew who it was he's the creator of radio in the greater tampa region so we always honored to sit next <laughs> and to and then him. you guys and you guys missed all the fun after that what do we miss what do we miss with adam and me at our favorite watering hole for oh. several well viardas the wee, the wee hours of the morning so you guys you adam hung out with you till the wee hours of alarda oh yes oh boy you don't pronounce the L in Vallardas. Vallardas? Vallardas. Got it. Okay. All right. Oh, these are so warm. I just want to cuddle with these. I just got handed fresh market statistics. And, and, uh, and instead you handed of him Florida Realtors, though, Mimi. You should pull the actual ones from MLS. So. Oh, these All are right. quarter two. These aren't going to be Hold on. Full. I know. That's what I just said. I, before mm. you even looked at it, I knew what it was. All right. So let's get into our market stats here in Tampa. Let's chat about this so we can see how we stack up to next week. And then we're going to tell you guys about a few of our new listings that we have coming on the market because they're going to be held open this Saturday. Well, I heard I heard before the show started that you have so many open houses, you don't have enough agents to cover them all. Uh, yeah, that would be right. But How so, did that happen? Um, it goes in waves, you know? Obviously. Yeah. When we, a lot of stuff, things, things normally go live around Wednesday, Thursday. And so one of them went live yesterday and my phone was blowing up. And the then you had to get time. a new phone that you don't know yeah. how to use. Well, yeah, that's another whole story. <laughs> well, it's a good thing we have two hours of radio. You can tell a long story. Yeah. So anyway, the, the my phone, literally, I was on the phone with a customer, and it died. Completely died. The customer died? No, my phone. Oh. So I had my laptop. I called her back from my laptop, and... Uh, I just, I was like, what is wrong with this phone? I probably troubleshot it myself for 45 minutes, another 45 minutes with my daughter that works for Verizon and, you know, went back and forth, went into the store the next day, did the same thing. They couldn't even factory reset my phone at wow. T-Mobile. You couldn't dial like the star 226, star 118. Nope. It kept crashing. Pound, pound, they said that the, the motherboard was corrupt. That's what they told me. Oh, corrupt motherboard. Anyway, yeah, so I switched to operating systems because these goons out here are always nagging me about, go with the iPhone, go with the iPhone. And I do have Mac, so I thought my thinking is, well, if I, you know, had a Mac, I could at least see my messages on my laptop and it wouldn't be so urgent to get my phone. Mm -hmm. But I just don't like the operating system. No, you just got to get used to it. I, I'm already used to it, but I... I Believe it or not, Leo, you're going to laugh about this, but I, <laughs> I haven't said anything yet. Oh. I have a list. <laughs> no? Really? No, sorry. I have a list of, of pros and cons, like literally stuff that I like about it and the stuff that I don't like about it. And at the end of a week, I'm going to... Oh, yeah, just see which, which one's bigger. That, yeah, well, and see if, see if even if one comes bigger than the other, can I live with it or do I want to? Wow. I mean, for me, I just like, I just get the largest phone I can on the market. So that's, that's kind of what I do. Well, I mean, here's the thing. I, I did a lot of research and reading on it after, you know, changing. And I had an iPhone one time before for about a week and I took it back. <laughs> Same thing. It, but basically when I was looking at this, it's, here's the thing with Android phones as opposed to iPhone is there are so many versions of them. There's so many different makers. There's so many different ones that they make so that basically for, for, for them to keep up right with everything that it's going to require to fit on that size screen or whatever they have going on, it's, it's a lot harder for the Android market to keep up because at this point it's a lot more innovative. So technically the, but the iPhones are more innovative than the Androids. No, the Androids are more innovative than the iPhones. Now iPhones, they're very particular about what gets to the app store. They're very protective. We call that cult like 
yeah, but you know, safety and security is at the top of their forefront. So they're saying right. that you now, know, it's planned obsolescence and making you buy their product every year is at the top of their forefront. Yeah, that's well, that's not. I'm not that way, but I can see where they would easily program something on the phone to. I think they all do it though, really. No, I think they were the first company that actually made the battery so you couldn't get to it. So when your battery died, you yeah. needed a new phone. That I didn't like. That was one of the reasons why I didn't get it, among many others, including the fact that our e key Leo. You know, now they work on iPhones, but they didn't originally. Oh, yeah. So, and they, and we also couldn't operate our MLS on a Mac for many years. We could only open it on Internet Explorer. And so I actually beta tested the first version for Mac. When's the, uh, speaking of the MLS, when's the KLS coming out, the Keller Williams version? Yeah, I don't, you know, that was a whole debate. I made a comment about uh, something online and, you know, what? It's uh, I didn't know it was a hot political debate topic. It's, it's in among the realtor world it is because you know just with NAR and the, and some things that they do and the required dues, which is another whole topic for another day. I don't think I want to get into right now. Oh, aren't your NAR dues due like now? They were probably already paid. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, let's get into our numbers because I I looked at them and went over them briefly last month. We got them together side by side. Well, I was stalling while she pulls up my Orlando numbers because I I heard and I, and I had something interesting that that Orlando's market. I've heard rumors that it was depressed, and I heard rumors that the Orlando market was suffering a lot, largely to do with all the furloughs. I mean, you got a complete collapse of the tourism industry in Orlando. Well, she actually should pull not only Orlando but Kissimmee as well. So I'll have her pull those two cities like we do for this. I I'd love to see that. I'd and love to talk about. I like. I think in addition to talking about the Tampa market each week, we should just pick one other random close market and compare. Like which well, market? Sarasota. Okay, Sarasota. I think is still on fire. That's yeah, well, that's predominantly been a retiree city. But yeah, like I think I think comparing with the Orlando, just just some comparisons to to broaden it because every week we say the same thing about the Tampa market. I, I at this point I don't understand with as many homes that are sold and is pending how we have. Any inventory whatsoever. I mean, like, it shocked me when, when you said you didn't have enough agents for your open house because how could you have so many listings? Well, this is a seven-day snapshot, remember? So mm. you know, in the last seven days, we've had 1,139 come in the market. It's even lower than last week at 12.12. I just, if I follow the overall statistics, if we're, if we're selling, if we're selling more than we're, we're gaining on the market and we have more going on pending... A lot more than we have uh, coming on the market. How is there any inventory left? I see these. I see columns of 17 going back all the way to like early May, and I see columns of a thousand going onto the market. We're like moving. We're moving 17. We're moving 700 more homes a week than we are gaining homes. So I mean, it's math. it's gonna it's a slow thing that happens, but basically you're you're gonna start to see, you know the absorption rate just go down and down and down. I mean, I already talked about the fact that it's right about one month supply of homes. Which is crazy because pre-COVID we were at 2.2. Which was already re very low. I mean, to think we'd get here, it's crazy. But yeah, I mean, so the number of solds is actually down a smidge, not much, but 1187 compared to last week of 1215. Yeah, I mean, it's just, these numbers are just on fire. And I'm just curious. And then what pendings other... are still up. Yeah, I'm just I'm just curious what the rest of the Florida markets do in different different pockets of Florida. And I think that would be interesting for our viewers because right now we've been saying the same thing for months. Tampa is the hottest market around, which was kind of weird because this time last year, if you think about it, we were actually talking about there's some kind of like not a bubble, but there's some kind of real estate recession coming. We were talking about that. Then COVID hit, and it's like it's the exact opposite's happened here in Tampa. Well, you say real estate recession. I say real estate cyclical dip. Or correction. Okay, fair enough. That's a good middle yeah, okay. of the road word, I would say. But we, we were saying that there was going to be a dip in the real estate market, and there just hasn't been. No, oh, not yet. No, because all these people got in lockdown from New York and moved here. Yeah. And it's not just New York. In Michigan. I'll be really curious. I, I know we don't talk politics at all. The one thing about politics I like to, to discuss and follow is the um, electoral college system. When we have the new census, it's very important to register for your census because that's how they're going to redistribute these electoral college votes. Mm, good point. And that has nothing to do with politics. That's just saying fill out your census. Right. 
You know, um... Does that feel like I hit a source, uh, a sensitive no, subject about the census? you didn't. Um, I was just thinking about a video that I was exposed to Monday, and I thought about playing it on the air, and I actually think I'm going to. I'm going to get it to Pat. 813-377-2775. That's 813-377-2775. And it's not political at all. I think it'll be the 9 o'clock hour. All right, stick around. We'll be back. Welcome back. This is Leo Kane with Barrel Engineering and Inspection. I am the sole host right now of Tampa Home Talk. You're listening at the 8 o'clock hour. We have a very special guest on the line. Um, I'd like to introduce Miles Super from Super Financial Group. How are you doing, Miles? I'm doing great today. Thank you for having me. Awesome, awesome. So I, I take it with the uh, Super Financial Group and your name being Mr. Super. It, it, am, I, am I pronouncing that correct? Yes. Okay. I, I take it this is your company? This is my, I'm, well, I'm the managing partner. I have um, two other partners there in New York, but I'm the managing partner. Awesome. Are they also Subers? Uh, no, they're not Uber. <laughs> wow. So, so there was a little bit of vanity there, but we had some continuity because um, the firm is a spinoff from um, the Uber group, which was um, incorporated in 1999. So we wanted to have some continuity um, in the name, and people already knew what the name was and the reputation. That's awesome. So you formed your own financial group with, with two people, but, but since it's your name, I'm going to call it your financial group. Um, this, this, that's phenomenal. So how do, you, how do you go about forming your own financial group? Well, um, a little bit about my background. Um, I'm one of those people from New York. <laughs> and I heard the good, last segment. <laughs> good morning, Miles. Thank you for listening, and we welcome our New Yorkers. Yes, and uh, what, what uh, you know how everyone has a summer job when you're a teenager and everything? Well, my summer job was um, on Wall Street. I worked for a firm called Low Broads, which was Sandy Wild's firm. And Sandy Wild um, merged with Shearson, American Express, and he is the founder, founder of Citigroup. So um, I started on Wall Street in 1976, working in the back office, counting physical stocks, something they don't do anymore. So as the years went by, I went to the Navy, um, went to Columbia, and I was going to be a history professor. I was going to be the best history professor in the world. And um, I was doing my summer job down on Wall Street, and it was pouring raining, and I saw this guy running to a limousine. And he had another guy with an umbrella over him. Right, And I said, if I'm the best history professor in the world, will I be able to run to a limousine and have somebody carry an umbrella over my head? And the answer was no, and I said, I'm staying on the street. So um, um, my whole career has been on um, in the financial district. And, you know, you learn, a, you learn, you work for big firms, you learn at boutique firms. So we did everything from oh, hospital takeovers. One. I like that. We did everything. Yeah, we did everything from hostile takeovers to mergers and acquisitions to, um, to um, you name it. We did proxy fights. And, 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 and in those little petite, um, little boutique firms, you know, you, 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 you learn the nuts and bolts and the pressure points and, um, um, you know, institutional versus um, mom and pops and the whole nine yards. So uh, I'm a 40-year financial professional. Um, I was on Wall Street uh, when um, when um, Ronald Reagan was president. We had the SNL scandal. I was on, no, when we had the, a penny stock scandal with Boski and Milken. I was on there when um, Father Bush was there and they had the SNL scandal. I was there when Bill Clinton was there. We had the dot-com bubble. And I was there when Baby Bush was there when we had the housing bubble. So this Baby is what Bush. I do. So how do you get... How do you get to be a finance, uh, start a financial by being on the street? <laughs> so Miles has got a pretty interesting background, and he ha- actually has a pretty laser-focused niche, if you will. Oh, the student loan piece. Yes. So in a way, he never left his dream of becoming a professor. Well, so let's well let's talk about it. You know, the the current student loan debt that it's a it's a big thing that I think is coming. No, it's not coming. It's here, yeah, it's and here we're while. we're actually yeah, it's been here for a while, and we are we are actually uh, there's no reason to talk about it's coming. It's reason to talk about solutions to it. Yeah, when and I say so coming, we, I, I'm thinking more along the lines, miles of possible 
um, you know, implosion of not paying that debt, that sort of thing. It's just, there's a certain aspect to it when you think about student loan debt is you have some, some noble professions, we'll call them teachers, scientists, um, um, zookeepers, um, people in the agriculture industry. You get Geologists in Florida. Ge geologists. You get degrees. You get very expensive degrees, $100,000 in student loan debt. And you're looking at minimum wage paying jobs when you graduate with that degree. It's like there's a huge disconnect between the amount of money it takes to get a degree to further humanity and the pay you get for using that degree. But it is. It's true. But I would say you also need to have some field experience, right? Just because you come out with a degree doesn't mean you can start at the top. Yeah, but I mean, even with the, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Miles, but, but even with that field experience with one of these type of degrees where you have this massive crushing debt, you're never going to make a salary to pay it off. Okay, so I want you to know you guys hit on the genesis of why uh, we got into the business that we got into. Originally, um, this, this idea was germinated because we had friends who I went to school with in New York who were educators. So therefore, they went to Ivy League schools, and they got PhDs and masters and everything, and now they're sitting on $200,000 worth of debt, and they're making $60,000, $70,000. Now, that might sound like a little bit in Florida, but that's nothing in New York. <laughs> I mean, so therefore, they have all these degrees, all these student loans, and what we realize is this. When, now, it sounds counterintuitive, but the least amount of money you make, the bigger bang you get. Because President Obama, the last Obama administration, changed the paradigm for student debt. And this is one of the um, unpublicized facts. If in the old days you borrowed a thousand dollars, you gave back a thousand dollars plus the interest, um, and, and there were no variables. Now. Whatever you borrow, you don't pay back based on what you borrow. You, base, you pay back based on what you can afford, income-based repayment. So, therefore, what we do is we immediately do an analysis to get them into an income-based repayment. So, we just had a client, and this is like last week, who was paying $900 per month. We just got her payments reduced to $150 uh, per month because of her income based on um, what she does, not based on how much she borrowed. And then, here's the caveat, we then look to put them in a loan forgiveness program because the federal government has several different loan forgiveness programs out there that are a bunch of crap except for one. The one that is um, five stars is the public service loan forgiveness program. You have to be a city, state, or federal worker or work for a 501c3. If you, that's the, um, the covenant for that program. If you are any of those, you go into that program, you do 120 payments, which is 10 years, and your loan is forgiven. So therefore, if you're sitting on $200,000 worth of debt, we can almost, and you don't make a lot of money, we can almost get the government to pay a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars in forgiveness. So that's why I say it's counterintuitive. In a lot of cases, people are ashamed of how much debt they got and how much little money they make. But in, in actuality, it works in their favor. How do you actually get those student loans forgiven? Um, well, here's the process of getting student loans forgiven. Um, once we do the student loan analysis and we, 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 put, you in, we put you into um, a repayment plan that works with your budget, and, and, um, we put you into the public service loan forgiveness. Once again, you have to be a city, state, or federal worker or volunteer for a 501c, at a 501c3. And uh, what happened was we were, we were going through a couple of years of the evolution of our firm, and we realized there was a gigantic slice of people who, who we couldn't put into the loan forgiveness program um, because they didn't, they didn't qualify because of they weren't government workers and they didn't work for a 501c3. So what we did was we partnered with a 501c3, and people can now volunteer at that 501c3, and now they qualify for loan forgiveness. So how does that work with them volunteering 
for the nonprofit? They, what how is there rules around how much, how long? Yes, the, um, the rules are the rules are they have to volunteer thirty hours a week. I mean, it That's sounds like a comes. dang good trade off for the amount of some of these Do they student get loans. Paid for the quote unquote volunteering in a nonprofit for thirty hours a week, or is this thirty in addition to the forty they're already putting in? No, 30, 30, if you volunteer 30 hours per week, that's, that's what the uh, uh, requirements are. And you, there's no such thing as, oh, you have to send them time slots or nothing like that. No, you, uh, um, if they're volunteering, the director or whoever it is, uh, the, uh, the administration could say, yes, this person does um, uh, volunteer 30 hours a week at this not-for-profit. And um, and the paperwork goes in, and then they're into the um, public service loan forgiveness. Now, do you have people? I guess we'll hold this question for after the break. But um, I'm sure people have to say, like, is this student loan forgiveness stuff actually real? Like, what's the catch? I'm sure you get that a lot. And then um, want to also talk about one of the other questions that you get is, why is the interest growing so fast? on the student loan debt. Well, if you're interested in learning more about forgiveness, text the word forgiveness to 813-377-2775. 813-377-2775. And one more time, then call or text. The word forgiveness. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back. This is Leo Kane with Barrel Engineering and Inspection. I guess we'll talk about this during the top we're, of the 9 o'clock We're back hour. with Miles Super. Yeah, Miles Super from the Super Financial and Group. his specialty is all about student loan forgiveness. And so if you missed the first segment or the second segment yeah. that we just came from, you'll want to stick around to get some more information. And you can call or text and we'll get you connected to Miles. It's 813-377-2775. I just love the fact that you can have students. I mean, because so many things you're hearing about forgiveness, business are getting forgiveness with the payment protection. Um, individuals are getting stipends back. So you hear that student loan, which is crippling debt, you can't get rid of it, follows you to your grave, it seems like. It, it's, it's, so it's, I, I'm painting a bleak picture, but it's true. We were having some, I haven't had student loan debt in years because I paid mine off so long ago. But, I, you know, just thinking about what were we t- saying on the break, Miles? It was like, this, okay, wait, we got to hold this for the air. We get that off air chatter going and it's like, oh man, hold it, wait. So what were you saying originally about these student loan forgiveness programs? Because I guess, the, well, the question is, is it real, right? Like, people have a lot of questions on, you know, how legit is this? Right. So here's, 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 this is really interesting. The student loan, public service loan, uh, public service loan forgiveness program is absolutely real. It was signed into law by um, George W. Bush. So what, what it was designed to to reward public servants simply because public servants generally are paid less than um, the private sector. So therefore, this was um, an added incentive to, um, to reward public servants. So what happens is this. The reason why people don't know about public service loan forgiveness, there is $1.5 trillion worth of debt out there. Do you think the government is going to advertise that there's loan forgiveness and take a 1.5 haircut on student debt? Yeah, I mean, it's not in their, yeah, it's probably a secret. There you go. It's not in their interest for you to know that their loans can be forgiven and they're going to take a haircut. Now, I so, don't care about anybody's political uh, um, um, opinion, right? But the new Biden, because I focus on student debt. So if it has to do with student debt, I talk You're about watching it. it. The yeah. New, the new Biden um, um, loan forgiveness pro, right? He's talking about student debt loan forgiveness. He's saying, we're going to take off $10,000 off of your student loan. Well, you know what? If I got $100,000, $10,000 do not move my needle. Yeah. It's a drop in the okay. bucket. So, what's the it deal with the interest, money. like just climbing so, so fast on the student loan debt? Okay, so um, I'm going to get a little granular because now we're going to talk a little bit about how this, how the game really works. The inside, and I want you to know something. The student loan industry hates me simply because I'm a financial professional. I'm just like them. I know what goes on. 
the last thing they want is someone who knows what goes on talking to the clients because they're used to telling the clients what to do and having cheap, and they want you isolated. So this is how the game goes. Let's say you have three loans, and they're all $100. So loan one, two, and three are all $100, and you're making $5 payments on um, – you're making $5 payments. We're using the lower school numbers. So you're making $5 payments. $5 is applied to loan one. So loan one is going down. Loan two is gaining interest. Loan three is gaining interest. So as you're paying, you're paying, you're paying, you finally get loan one down to $15, right? You make your next payment. Guess what they do? They don't apply it to loan one. They apply it to loan two. Mm -hmm. So therefore, loan two... I always wondered why... And so now loan one gets a chance to get healthy. Loan three has been blowing up. And what what we do... Now, let me tell you once again. So Miles... I got a question. Yeah. So in this, what you're saying, like in your $100 example and you're paying $5, is it fair mm-hmm. to say that loan three is accruing more than $5 in interest? Is that fair? Absolutely. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that's very fair. Okay. <laughs> yeah. When well, you're talking to somebody that's a little bit jaded by this, right? Because I haven't had student loans in 20 years. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not ignoring it. I'm saying I know it exists. I'm just saying that I personally have not had student loan. But I'll tell you, when we see credit reports, Miles, I always wondered why I would see so many different loans all over the credit report for student loans. I thought, gosh, it's just so littered up. Like, why wouldn't they just give them one loan? But that answers that. Well, you, well, you just answered the question. What we do is we don't allow three different loans. We'll consolidate the loans. So all of those loans will, will appear on their credit as paid off and a new debt instrument is um, established. Now, here's the interesting thing. I used to come, I come from the old uh, mortgage broker industry. So we all knew about DTI and all that other stuff. When you have student debt, it affects your DTI. When we come in, lower your student debt, guess what happens to your DTI? It well, gets lowered. It's going to go down. Debt. Yeah, so, I mean, I come from that same so, world. We see it all the time, still today. So, so what happens is a lot of times... Um, so Miles, I, I want to talk let, to realtors and brokers. Let me ask you a question. I know that mm-hmm. I, if I'm not mistaken, I'd have to ask Sarah to verify. But if someone has say fifty thousand dollars in student loan debt. I believe they're counting one percent of the payment against them for their debt to income ratios, even though they're not actually in repayment yet. I'm pretty sure it's that amount. So if you're consolidating them, is that required payment actually lower? Well, we well what we do is this. Remember, we, we, we are consultants, and we work with the housing industry, and since I have a background in the housing industry, what we do is we consolidate the client, or we look at the client, and we look at what their needs are. If you are trying to get into a home, right, and we know that, you know, you can't put zero down as a repayment because they don't accept that. So what we do is we try to find and tailor the repayment program that would allow them to get into the home. Oh, wow. Once That's they, exciting. Once they get into the home, then we can restructure the payment yes. to, to fit them. So once again, we are consultants and we deal with different strategies based on the needs of our clients. I love sense. that. It makes so much sense to me. I understand that. So on average, like, let's say someone has 50 grand in student loan debt. How long does it take them usually to pay that off before they meet somebody like you? Okay, so if a client, if my client wants to pay off the student debt, they're talking to the wrong firm and they're talking to the wrong person. We're not, we don't want them to pay their student debt off. What we want to do is get them into the lowest payment possible and put them into loan forgiveness. Yeah, but I, I could get that. Loan- yeah, I totally get that okay. value. But my, my question was just more from a curious perspective okay. on if someone has 50 grand in student le- loan debt, how long do you see them taking to pay that off? Do you know? Well, if you have 50, and I want you to know something, 50 is a very low loan value. Okay. But if you have $50,000, if you have $50,000, you have to also bring in how much income do you make. 
So therefore, if you make a hundred thousand dollars and you have fifty thousand dollars worth, of it, it's not going to take you much at all. S- simply because you have the disposable income that you can double your payments, you can you know go into accelerated payment plans. This is a different uh, uh, um, variety of things you can do. So this is this is crazy. Like you can go to school, be a doctor, have two hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt, and then go work for the city or county or federal government, including the military. And not have to pay that back. Is that right? That is correct. And you and I have clients like that. How long do you have to work for those companies? You have to you have to make a hundred and twenty qualified payments. So, so therefore, but here's years. the great thing. Yes, ten years. Here's the great thing. You can go from uh, um, the city to a non for profit, long as you are still in. Um, um, working in 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 the um, not for profit world or the government world, you can move around, or you, you can still work and volunteer private. thirty hours, right? There you go. Now you understand. Or you can go to the private sector and volunteer. And once again, we come up with these strategies. And, and you know, um, when we get a client, we say, okay, what's your goal? What do you want to do? This is how we we see uh, about making this thing work. If you work in the private sector, here's a, um, a not-for-profit that you can volunteer at. And um, and what the not-for-profit gets is they get the energy and the uh, intellectual prowess. And what the person gets is they get um, their loan together. All right, so I've got a question. I want to know if I can if I can teach my old dog new tricks. I, you know, I want to see if I can pimp my husband out, which already works for a uh, city municipality, and uh, Get him in school and get that student loan paid off. I can do that? Yes. And so is it retro at all or just from the time you apply? Well, here now, here's the interesting thing. If you were in an income-based repayment program before you um, um, went into the public service loan forgiveness, and let's say you were in there because I had a client yesterday. Let's say you were in it for five years, an income-based repayment, right? And now we put you into a, a loan forgiveness. All of those previous payments that you did in income-based count toward your loan forgiveness. Okay, so, all right, so what about the balance that's left? The government, government picks it up. Wow. All right, so but it's not retro, right? So if he, he doesn't have any student loans left, so let's say if he were to go back to college, it's it's covered right away. It, yeah, if he if he doesn't have any student debt, and it's only what he accrues now. Right. If, if he has a blank seat, no, yeah, you're not going to get forgiven for something that's not there. It's not on the books. No, no, but I'm saying, what if he decides, hey, uh, this is out there. I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, and go to college, and, um, you know, I want to have the student loan debt wiped out while I get my master's. He can do that if he's working for a municipality? Yes, the answer is yes. Wow. Incredible. I'm like, your wife, my husband is watching, and he thought that old dog comment wasn't so funny. <laughs> I thought it was really funny. Anyway, so um, I know some of the common things you guys get were – about the student loans and um, you know do they ever do they go away after seven years do they ever get written off and I don't I don't think they do do they don't they like follow you forever there's a statute of limitations is there on student loan debt there's a statute of limitations if you go a certain amount of time without paying the debt is no longer enforceable I didn't think it applied on on government anyway 25 years 25 oh, years that's a long time okay I mean, so it's, it's, yeah it's 25 years and, 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 but here's the thing Student law, I, I worked on in so many different areas in the financial services industry. Uh, this is the most predatory product I've ever seen in my life. Because wow. they're taking people, they're taking people who are barely adults and they are sticking debt on them immediately. Now, Miles, really quick, because we're out of time. Um, okay. Um, but your, your product is super affordable. I know we're running out of time to talk about it, so I want to give out the number so we can get you connected. It's 813-377-2775. Just call or text student loan debt or forgiveness, if you prefer, to 813-377-2775, and we'll get you connected with Miles. Thanks so much. We'll be back. Well, good morning.
morning. Welcome back. Leo Kane here. Barrel Engineering and Inspection. We've got an exciting group of, oh, Facebook Live just died, but we yeah. have an exciting group of open houses to talk about. We do. We are stocked with some new listings, and we're going to chat about that real quick before we get to Adam. So let's roll through these, and I'll tell you something amazing about all of them, and pretty much all of them are going to be held open this weekend. So Saturday, 11 to 3 in Wesley Chapel, we have 2998 Hiller Drive. We've got a beautiful... Beautiful four bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms. Um, we've got. It's a. Wow, I'm just like wow. What are you? Which one are you looking at? I'm looking at Hiller Drive. Yeah. Now this property is only a year old. I know that's why I'm saying wow. I've sold more than one property for that client, and I tell you, every time his house is always in pristine condition. I just love the pendant lighting. That, that's and what I love about this. Well, house. he's he's in, in done. Covers, shoot, seals, everything seals. He's done what twenty thousand dollars in upgrades since he bought it new. So yeah, it's a deal. Yeah, I mean you're getting an upgraded home because you're not getting a you're not getting a a, a builder box. You're getting an upgraded upgraded home, beautiful pendant lighting, beautiful sealed pavers. This, this is the house you want to check out. 2998 Hilliard Drive, Wesley Chapel. 11 to 3. See you on Saturday. Also, see you on Saturday, more in my neighborhood. Which, by the way, I'm going to give you the number. Don't feel like you have to write this down. We'll text it to you. Yeah, we have 704 East Norfolk Street. Brand new listing. Like, that just hit, I think, this morning, right? Yeah, or yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. This is 33604, so we are in the Seminole Heights, Tampa Heights area. Um, it's a starter home because it's a it's a 3-1. It's... Um, that is right in the heart of Tampa, that Seminole Heights area. That house is going to go fly. quick. It's going to fly. Uh, it's got a good listing price. It's reasonably priced at two seventy-five. A three-one in Tampa Heights, uh, bungalow style. I like what they've done at the front. I like I like that little entryway. They yes. just moved it around to make well, it well. Look- yes, it came that way, and that's that's actually such a cute little place. And I'll tell you something unique about this property. And it's really affordable for the price two seventy-five. For one, the yard is huge. It does. It looks and huge. it's got a, a side um, entry. It's got this little drive in the front, but also in the back, which you can't see from the photos. There's another little driveway with a two-car garage, and it's got a courtyard all in the middle that's screened. There's still plenty of yard. What I also like about this is it was remodeled in 2016, so we got some we got some cosmetic upgrades done recently. But I mean the guts were upgraded in 2016. Yeah, and everything's in really good shape on that one. It's had fresh paint and everything. And that one will be open from 11 to 3. Also from 11 to 3. Yeah, we have one more. Now let's just say you're not in Wesley Chapel, you're not in Tampa, but you're a little bit east of the I-75 corridor, and you're looking for something in the Valrico area. We yep. have something for you. We got 3409 Bloomingdale Oaks Drive. This one, my phone has been blowing up on. I know your phone literally just it, died. It was it's blowing up so much. Almost a quarter of an acre. This is a four two two and a half. Um, this is a huge quarter acre. It's in the heart of Bloomingdale. Um, yeah, I mean, Th- this one is going to go quick. I think we might even have offers on that. I don't even know. I got in late, but I know we're holding it open Saturday and Sunday from eleven to three. And and, and I look at things like when, when important things like the roof. When the water heater, when the ACs are replaced, I mean, AC in 2015, roof in 2018, that, that's what you want on a home that's from 1986. 1986, you're about 30, 34 years old. You're looking for these upgrades. You're looking for the HVAC upgrades. Also you're looking for one, the roof upgrade. Yeah, this one's also another one in very pristine condition. Just beautiful flooring, everything throughout. I've got another one, Indian Rocks Beach, too. Let's talk about that one. Uh, I don't think that one is a... We have it, for sure. That one's brand new. No, I don't. The time is no, uh, to be announced on this one, but... Indian, I don't... Oh, there, there it is. We, go. we have one more open house to talk about. Let's say you're west. That's got a water view. I love west it. West of the Howard Franklin, you're Indian Rocks Beach. We've got a water view. We've got a 2-2 two, two in Kulu Landing South. This is 528 Garland Circle, number 528. So Indian Rocks Beach. This makes it a condo, right? Yes. Well, that'll be right here in your legal description. No, actually, it's not. No, Beach Lovers. Oh, it is. It is, it is right. Yep. But so, it's got two balconies. It overlooks the water. And two bedroom condos aren't aren't easy to come by. And it's a beautiful community. Like when you pull up, it's very inviting. Yeah, I mean you just gotta think about it. Like a lot of condos are gonna be one ones, maybe one one and a halves. To get a two two that's a condo is pretty nice. So that doesn't even feel like a two bedroom. It's really spread out. And it has actually another room on the bottom that's technically not counted because it was enclosed. A lot of people do that, they enclose it in those lower areas and they're not supposed to, so it's not counted, it's not insurable, but it's there. So you can use that space. Speaking of insurability, is do we have Adam Talley on the line? We do. Adam. 
I'm still here. Yes, awesome. good to talk to you guys. It sounds like you got a you got a lot of got a lot of stuff going on. We got Katrina. four open houses. Right Text the word "open house" to eight one three three seven seven two seven seven five. We'll get you more information about Indian Rocks Beach, Valrico, Wesley Chapel, and Tampa. And we've got several. We didn't even get a we'll chance talk to talk about to. these other non-open house listings later. Adam, take it away. So uh, it's and uh, I'm glad we're talking about open houses and I know we were talking about student loan debt and all this other stuff today and uh, I don't have an insurance tip of the week because what I want to use my time for is to say that we are hiring. Um, so if you were one of these people that maybe your job no longer exists, um, reach out and apply. You can text the the call in number the um, 813-877-2775. Or three seven seven. Sorry, I messed that one up. I was like, "Wait a minute, um, Adam." But we, yeah. I, well, I'm not looking at the uh, at the banner right now, but uh, <laughs> it's uh, we're hiring, and I'm I'm open to somebody with sales experience, but that has not worked in insurance before. Now I tell you, um, we, we no we're problem. gonna. You better stick around and listen, Adam, because at nine o'clock, I'll tell you exactly where to find those people. <laughs> or yeah, maybe Leo. Well, well. We're we're looking. So if you wanna. Want to break into a new industry? We're uh, we're hiring and for sales and uh, customer service. So um, reach out. Happy to happy to. Are uh, you still hiring? Interview. Yeah, we're still. To hiring. everybody's I'm still talking hiring. To me or Leo. <laughs> Every all three of us are yeah, still it, hiring. It, it it's it's interesting. It's a, a lot of people I talk to. They're they're either they're either having the best year they ever had or they're you know it's been it's been absolutely Great. nothing. So it's. Uh, we're definitely thankful for uh, the opportunities we've been given this year, and we'd love to, you know, share that with other people. So, you know, I think you just find what you're looking for, right? Like, if you're looking for your best year ever, you're probably going to get it despite any market. That's 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 true. That's true. But so, uh, hey, do you want to comment on this property really quick? Because um, we sure. see this all the time, right? Like these lower areas that are closed in, whether by the homeowner or the previous owner. So they're closed in, mm -hmm. but the lower sections totally a flood zone. So you're not supposed to put anything permanent down there. But people close it mm -hmm. all the time, right? And what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, it makes it really difficult to file a, a flood claim later on um, had a client that uh, they lived there in the panhandle hurricane came they had done some some downstairs renovations and they wanted it to be um, wanted it to be covered filed a claim and the uh, claim got denied because that's yeah. not how we insured it originally so. yeah i'm not gonna cover anything you didn't do without a permit right <laughs> all right this yeah. is tampa home talk thanks for joining us adam um, stick around. We'll be back for hour number two in just a minute. And we're going to get into those Orlando numbers that Leo was asking about last hour right when we come back. And we'll stack that up against Tampa. Fair enough? That's, that sounds more than fair. I'm sorry. All right. Off your number, 813-377-2775. Love where you live or we'll fix it. We'll be back for hour number two. 